In this technical demonstration, we'll go through the process of migrating from an on-prem desktop single sign-on using IWA routing rules to Okta's agentless desktop single sign-on. In order to complete this configuration, we'll need to add a new service account in Active Directory and configure the service principal name or SPN. We'll then take a look and configure the client browser setting changes that can then be pushed using group policies. We can then enable and test agentless desktop single sign-on in the Okta Classic org. Now, before we begin, it is important to note that both on-prem and agentless desktop single sign-on can be enabled at the same time. Under this configuration, the authentication flow will start by attempting an agentless desktop single sign-on using the on-prem desktop single sign-on as a failover. It's also important to remember that on-prem desktop single sign-on uses IWA routing rules, which are not supported in OIE. And in order to upgrade the org, to OIE, these rules must be removed. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm logged in as an Okta administrator and using the admin console, we'll use the security menu and select delegated authentication. From here, you can see that on-prem desktop single sign-on is on and we have an IWA agent deployed. Under the identity providers, we'll move over to the routing rules and you can see that we have an IWA routing rule that is not supported by OIE. Now we'll remove this rule a little bit later because we don't want to create an interruption of service until we have configured and deployed agentless desktop single sign-on. So let's move over to our AD environment and begin the configuration. Now I've moved over to my domain join server and we'll start by configuring the service account for agentless desktop single sign-on followed by configuring the service principal name. Now it is recommended that you have sufficient domain privileges in order to complete these tasks. We'll start with the new service account. We'll give it a name. We'll then configure the password and then we'll simply click finish. Now, once the account is in place, we need to make a change to the account properties. So we'll open the properties and click the account tab. And in the options shown here, we need to enable the support for Kerberos AES 128 and 256-bit encryption. Once that's complete, we can move on to configuring the service principal name or SPN. To configure the SPN, I'll open the command prompt and type in the following command line. Set SPN is the command that we'll use to set that service principal name. And for this demonstration, Classic OIE is the name of my Okta org and it is a preview org. So the full URL will be classicoie.kerberos.octopreview.com. The final variable in the command line is the service account we created earlier. We'll go ahead and press enter, and as you can see, the SPN has been configured and updated. Now the next step is to configure the browser settings. Now these settings can be deployed to domain join systems using group policies, but for this demonstration, We'll simply take a look at the specific settings individually using the control panel on the server. So from the control panel, we'll move to the network and internet settings and click internet options. From here, we'll click the advanced tab and move down to the security section to confirm that we have enabled integrated Windows authentication. Once this is completed, we can move to the security tab and click local intranet. From here, We'll click the Sites button, then click Advanced, where we can then add the URL that was used when we configured the service principal name. For this demonstration, that URL will once again be classicoie.kerberos.octopreview.com. We'll click Add and close the Internet options. Now, as mentioned earlier, these settings can be pushed to clients using GPO for Chrome users. A registry key can be configured and deployed using group policy. Now I've moved back to my Okta org where I can now enable agentless desktop single sign-on. Under delegated authentication, we'll click edit to enable agentless desktop single sign-on. For this demonstration, we'll select on and move down to the Active Directory instances. We'll click the pencil next to the AD environment where we configured the service account We'll then enable desktop single sign-on and enter the service account name and password and click Save. 
Now, once agentless desktop single sign-on is enabled, a new routing rule will be created under identity providers. This is a default rule that is currently inactive and must be configured based on your requirements. For this demonstration, we'll click edit and change the user IP settings to use a network zone that I created earlier. Next, we'll make sure that we have the identity provider configured to use agentless desktop single sign-on. We can now click update and activate the rule. Now to validate that agentless desktop single sign-on is configured properly and is functional, we can then use the browser on a domain joint machine and browse to the org. If properly configured, the browser should display the end user dashboard without prompting for a username or password. Now that agentless desktop single sign-on is configured and operational, we can now remove the IWA routing rules so we can complete the upgrade to OIE. Now remember that your domain join systems should be moved to agentless desktop single sign-on before removing the rules. This will prevent any interruption of service.